Okay, so here's the next uh, part of the uh, ship's wheel assembly. Now, this wheel um, is actually uh, to raise and lower the main rolls. So one of the things that we have to do is we have to keep track of that position uh, relative to the other roll. So there's a hub, and that's what we're going to make out of this chunk of brass here. Um, there's a drive hub that fits in here, um, made out of brass, that supports this little counter. And I'll show you this in just a second here. And then when you rotate this wheel, you can actually keep track of the position, the relative position of the roll. Okay, and then go back to a particular setting if you have to open the machine up, um, you know, to clean or do something, uh, do something like that. So a couple things. Um, one is this is a, uh, a Elsa counter. Okay, it's a little mechanical. It's actually really cool. It's a little pendulum counter here, right? So it, it's always points down, but when you rotate it, um, it actually keeps track of uh, keeps track of turn counts. These are pretty common in uh, bottling and conveyor industries and things like that, where you you make adjustments for bottle sizes and whatnot, and um, and you need to keep track of the position. Um, it's just a static little thing, dog simple and it's going to fit in the center of this uh, with a decorative brass hub of course and uh, that brings us to the chunk of brass here now you know some guys have asked they go god where do you buy all this brass you know it must uh, cost a million bucks right well sometimes it does not, well not a million um, this particular piece was eighty eighty four dollars uh, there's a, a dealer online, and I'll put a little link on the screen there for you, Tempco Industrial. And these guys, I don't know where they get it, I don't know what the deal is, they must have a connection with a machine shop, but they've got stubs of brass and bronze and all kinds of things, and they sell them for cheap, okay, free shipping too. So uh, check them out online and um, buy some brass from them or bronze or whatever. Uh, this is, like I said, you saw that aluminum bronze, it was over 100 bucks. This is 80 bucks and it's more material. Um, so this hub fits in here and then it's driven, it's connected with one of these uh, Trantorque um, made by Fenner Drives, not to be confused with Keith Fenner. <laughs> um, anyway, it's kind of an expanding, contracting collet assembly. Um, it's gonna fit in the middle of that. So uh, let's go over to the lathe and uh, let's make some chips. All right, there's some little little humpy bumpies in there. It's just the extruded uh, shape or the uh, extruded bar there. It's kind of, you know, it's got some chowder marks in it there. Uh, so we're going to skim that to make a nice surface. All right. So I think we're going to use my favorite tool here. This is this uh, CCGT. Uh, this is made by Vardex. Um, and it's a uh, polished high positive insert and it pretty much works good on everything um, It's not real um, Like durable for heavy narfing and roughing, but uh, it works uh, Really good on a broad range of materials. So let's do a little uh, facing cut here. Oop, hey, how about if I turn the machine on? First? Hello Okay a little datum there we're gonna come back and uh, we're gonna take a little more off of that later on but I just wanted to flatten it off and get it cleaned up okay and then we're gonna do the same thing on the OD just get it cleaned up see what it looks like okay so it's still an interrupted cut you see it flashing thing is what? Uh, one and a half long. Okay, so see it didn't quite clean up, but we'll uh, we can get a, a diameter measurement at this point. 
So you're looking for that little, that point where everything's seated and then I, I push it back and forth a little bit just to feel it slide and it has a real, I don't know, it's kind of hard to describe, it's, a, it's kind of almost a slippery feel when you got it. Oh, okay, we're still over three and a half, so uh, we got, uh, oh, wow, this tool is actually calibrated pretty good. Um, so let's reset it, 3.503, enter, okay. So now what I've done is I've calibrated that tool, so I made a cut and I haven't moved it, and, um, and I take a measurement and now I can, I can calibrate this tool um, for that particular diameter. So now I can just watch the DRO and it reads basically direct. So let's, uh, let's turn some brass. <laughs> that is like <laughs> a hailstorm of brass. Let's uh, let's try slowing that down a little. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it's still whipping it out. Right. Deeper cut. put a radius in this corner after the fact so uh Okay, so we're, we're pretty good on the bore here. Okay, three tenths, four, four tenths over, okay, which is good. And I'll show you how this, uh, this deal works here, okay. So the way this works is the idea is there's a shaft in here and what we want to do is not have to use a keyway, right? Um, so this is a, it's a drive hub and it, it compresses on the ID and expands on the OD. It's got a double taper. So this is going to simulate the, uh, the shaft and then that plugs in there and then let's get it a little closer I think so when we expand that okay there it goes all right we slip it in and then you crank that down okay now I don't, I don't want, well I can crank on it all I want so now this is positively coupled to that um, and it will transmit, I don't remember what the rating is for this, but it eliminates the need to cut keyways. Um, you just need uh, simple bores and whatnot. And then the important part is, is you can use these to adjust subtleties and timing too. So I can change the relationship between this hub and that shaft as where a keyway wouldn't allow that. A keyway, you know, it's, it's one location and you're done, right? This basically, you know, as an example, let's say I wanted that alignment, right? Well, let's say 
part of my mechanism uh, required that I clock this just, you know, a degree or two, right? And now I can just lock that down and it'll transmit full torque um, in that position. It doesn't care. So it's basically infinitely adjustable for phase, okay? Okay, so I thought it might be fun. You know, we have to face this backside off here, right? Well, you know, I could grab it by this boss and face this, this backside. But uh, you can also use these, these goofy little tran torques uh, for work holding kind of uh, deals. Okay, so let's, let's, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use this to hold this thing for facing. If I can get in there and secure that. I got a, I got a wrenchy here. I don't want to scratch this thing. So one advantage of this is it's it's actually referencing the bore, uh, which is kind of what we care about. That's probably plenty. Let's give it a little spin and see what we got there. Yeah, it looks pretty tasty to me. Let's uh, let's give it a little uh, a little face job there. <clears throat> okay. Thickness there. All right, so I got eleven thousandths. Yeah, did I dink that stupid thing? Maybe that was already in there. Huh? I didn't notice that. Oh, I think it's a dent from before. Okay, I might have to take a little off of the OD. Get rid of that. All right, Let's see how it behaves. Let's just take a quick. Now I can use the DRO to keep track. God, I keep stopping. <laughs> keep stopping on that blemish. All right, I got about seven thousandths left according to this. 
So, just gonna take it all off in one shot. Mr. Boza did it right. Ta -da. All right, so that's one side. And then uh, there's another bit that uh, is actually kind of a, um, a bezel uh, for this side. So it's recessed, so this can't get clobbered. And uh, it can't, you know, this is kind of modern, so it kind of hides it a little bit too, but you can still see the face. Uh, so, Let's uh let's go get started on that one. <laughs> 